system? What's the haps? What what is the haps? This is uh the Tippy Forties podcast episode. Was it twenty two? Twenty two. Okay. Yes. So this is the most depressing podcast because this is when you realize that you have no more podcasts to look forward to. So uh, <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm, I'm Michael. I'm Alex. I'm Benson. I'm Ryan. Okay, and uh, this week uh, uh, we're going to be doing a, Oh God, Shut Up. Ryan's going to talk about HP because yeah, they're a great company. Um, Kevin's going to be talking about or teaching us about drinking games. And Alex is going to tell us what the fuck happened in the TV pilot Terra Nova. He just shakes his head. That doesn't come through the... Maybe it does come through the audio. You hear the breeze. <laughs> um, you can just hear the sadness. <laughs> but anyways, if you want to contact us, uh, you can call us at 218-666-8407. Or you can email us at podcast.tippin40s.com. Did well, we get anything this week? Actually, we got email. one email with some guy who wanted us to read an article from Wall Street Journal. I did. I don't know if you did, but... I didn't I see it. I saw that email, man. I must the have education fucked. one. I read it anyway, so it was an interesting article. What was it about, specifically about education? I, I apologize. I don't know why. I oh, it's um, basically if you can uh, set values as something people can learn, you know, like honesty and, you know, oh. stuff like that. Probably. Yeah, there's like pros and cons of both sides. Whatever. We'll maybe talk about it next week if he reads the article or something. Okay, yeah. So, um, anyways, uh, on to beer of the week then, because uh, we got a lot of things to talk about. Um, real quick, I'm drinking Stiegel. Some of you guys had drank Stiegel it. Stiegel Pilsner. Stiegel, had yeah, Pilsner. Yeah, yeah but, I've had it. Um, I had had not, so I was like, oh, cool. It's pretty clean this. beer. Yeah, and yeah, it's well, uh, Austrian. Light. Yeah, it's light. Yep. Which is kind of, uh, Austrian's MO, wine or beer, is clean flavors. Yeah. And I what I read in BevMo is that it's 50% lemon soda. Huh. And, Hmm. I yeah, didn't know that. I I don't taste that completely, but it is really crisp, and there is a little bit of citrusy notes. But it's highly carbonated too, but it doesn't taste like half of its Sprite either. So I don't know. <laughs> I'm not I'm not well, obeying I'm my sure, thirst. I'm sure lemon soda in Europe tastes different than Sprite here does. <laughs> Dude, sodas a, in Europe are so much better than here. They're yeah. less sweet. Well, yeah, they have Italian less, cream sodas are so good. Oh, so good. Not as much high fructose so, corn syrup. Yeah. <laughs> there, I want to just say about Stiegel. There is a. Uh, American enemy territory player named after the beer named Stiegel was one of the best players ever. That's all I have to say. Uh, okay. Really? Thanks for do, the enemy do you have like a do, do you do you respect him or do you hate him? Oh, I respect him, but it was, <laughs> it was like I, I saw that beer and I was like, wait a second, this guy I, named after this beer. So I asked him, he's like, yeah. Would you say you're on par with him? Uh, he was before me. He's probably better than me, actually. He's like a leg, sort of a legendary guy. So. Oh, Let's that's talk cool. About enemy territory he probably works at like. <laughs> Ikea or <laughs> okay. Maybe. I don't know if you Actually, know he Actually, he made a lot of money in IT consulting, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> well, that would be where the free time came from. <laughs> so he runs a deployment and then just sits there and plays enemy territory and starts <laughs> yeah. uploading. All right, all right. Um, okay, so we're right to the segments, so that's good. Okay, uh, I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes since we got yelled at last time. So HP. I'm going to talk about HP. Their board of directors is probably the stupidest board of directors in the last 10 years no. or so. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're completely stupid. Um, I originally had a whole thing about their mistakes, but I'm just going to go down timeline, basically, of what's happened to them in the last 10 years or so, because okay. it makes more sense. That sounds good. Start with, I, I will say, though, they've grown the past 10 years. Well, now. they've grown, and they've also done really stupid things. Yeah. We're going to start with, uh, start in 1999, uh, Carly Fiona is the CEO. Oh, um, she was actually one of the they, first women CEOs is, of a top Fortune 500 This is company. the woman who uh, ran for governor in California, No, no, right? senator. 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 She ran okay. for senator. That's right. There's yeah. a different person who ran for... What, anyway. She ran for her jobs when that she was Demon Sheep jobs. ad. Yes, She's that was Demon, Demon Sheep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, go on. Anyway, um, <laughs> basically, during her tenure at HP, she oversaw the compact merger. Okay. This is back when compact made its own PCs and they bought yep. them. Right. It, so. It's like one plus one equals 1.5. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing... Um, <laughs> yeah. This was overseen during the uh, dot-com bust, basically. So it was kind of controversial at the time whether or not you know HP should be spending that money. But uh, during the Compact merger, the Compact board member Tom Perkins was a uh, was a proponent. He endorsed the merger. Okay, well, of course. He later joined, then retired from the HP board of directors. Okay, because okay? he was on the Compact one, I believe. Um, anyway, during her tenure from uh, 1999 to 2005, the stocks basically dropped by half, and the board of directors <laughs> wasn't happy about this. So in um, 2005, uh, she was forced to resign as chief executive. Um, as the chairman of Hewlett Packard, following differences with the board of directors. The board of directors wanted her to give up more control of what was happening, and she said no. 
Uh, so in order to get her off the board, they rehired on this time Perkins due to the board directors, got the vote, fired her, and then uh, she was she was out. So uh, she's not been hired as CEO since, but that's uh, <laughs> one thing. Or they hired on uh, Mark Hurd from uh, 2005 to 2010. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mark Hurd. Mark Hurd actually pulled off uh, a big corporate turnaround for HP. He got them mm-hmm. in line. He got their profits back up. Uh, five-year revenue gain soared to 130%. Stock he output. pushed them more towards corporate IT. He also pushed them more towards focusing on their poor business practices of uh, computers, really, after the merger. Right. But um, after, uh, in 2006, HP admitted the company used tricks it believed were coming from the board. Or in 2006, I'm, I'm trying to rush here. Don't rush. Yeah. Just, just slow down. The uh, company, the board of directors used a bunch of tricks to try to find a leak that was coming out from the board. Okay. And during... A leak in terms of what? Uh, just information about the company. Okay. So, um, basically, they were using uh, disturbing tactics to spy on people in the top of the company and whatnot. Yeah, that was big news yeah, when it, it happened. Yeah, and uh, during this, the uh, chairman of the board, uh, Pat Patricia Dunn, and uh, Tom Perkins both resigned because of this whole scandal thing. <laughs> Because they're basically getting private investigators to walk Yeah, because they knew about it yeah. and yeah. were responsible <laughs> for it. So. In any case, um, later on, uh, Mark Hurd had a, a sexual harassment lawsuit brought on to him. Yeah, a few years later. A few years later. This is in, irrelevant, but uh, some actress named Jody Fisher, who he, he had hired her as a consultant. An outside law firm found that the, this person, that Mark wasn't guilty of harassment, but found that he had been uh, covering up uh, false expense reports, yes. basically. He, he, had, he had embezzled. <laughs> yeah. They should be saying that, yeah, but they he's don't. They, yeah. he's, he embezzled about $40,000. Um, he denied the affairs with Fisher. He never really said anything about the embezzlement. He just... I don't know, played the fifth or she something. Probably she probably didn't put but, it. But um, during all of this, <laughs> the uh, board members decided that uh, Mark Hurd had not been entirely truthful about it. So uh, some of them wanted to fire him on the spot. Others said that he should stick around for a while so they get, you know, a person, <laughs> you know, so they can arrange for a successor yeah. and do an orderly transition. Well, he said, fuck it, and left. Uh, he went on to uh, Oracle, which, by the way, the board of directors of HP later sued him for doing. Right, and also, <laughs> Larry Ellison, who's one of the most unprofessional people as a chairman ever, he shit all over HP for even criticizing Mark Hurd or threatening to yeah. fire him because, you know, I will say Mark Hurd greatly improved that company. Yeah. So, but at the same time, he committed a felony, a felonious act. Yeah. Like yeah. He should have went to jail. And of course, it's to America. Well, he so did, he matter. did improve the standing of the company a lot, but he also hurt their public image a lot. Well, well yeah, yeah, he yeah was absolutely. I've spoken, but. Regardless, this is where it starts to get fun. The uh, board of directors put up and made a group within themselves to find a new CEO. Okay, because right. they made one. Yeah. Some of the the problem is that the directors. Were, so is it kind of like a little committee? Yeah, a little committee within the board of directors. Okay. The problem you, is you know only one. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, exactly. what it was. It was five people sitting around going, ah, oh, oh, pretty I'll much. Know. The, the problem is good, the uh, yeah. the other directors who weren't in this group became immediately distrustful. Uh, yeah. They thought of course. that their colleagues were going to advance their own ambitions, perhaps name themselves as CEOs, etc. Um, because of this, <laughs> yeah, the, I nominate me. <laughs> because of this, people were so angry that like they didn't participate in board meetings and stuff. Yeah. They just had a bunch of infighting. So they searched around for a CEO for a while, and eventually they found um, Leo Apaker. I think is it Apotheker? Yeah, that's his name. Yeah, who had uh, just lasted, who had just ended his seven months as chief executive of uh, Germans SAP. Seven, uh, seven, 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 seven months. Yeah. months. SAP was like, "Fuck this dude." Yeah. Um, well, reasonably known in Europe, Europe in software circles and business circles, yes. there he was uh, unknown pretty much in Silicon Valley. Uh, apparently, one HP board of director said we had a joke. The code name for the search was Leo Apaker because no one had heard of him. That was the code <laughs> name. They used yeah. the code name of the next CEO as the CEO. I want to say though, <laughs> SAP. They, SAP is a gigantic company. Yeah. I mean that is impressive. I that have he no ran idea. It. I mean they're they're right behind Oracle. I mean they're yeah. a huge company, and I mean that's a. That's great. This is back to we talk about this a lot in our or well, at least Kevin or Benson and I talk about this is your resume is more important than what you did at your job. It's yeah. like yeah. holy shit, this guy was CEO of SAP. This is exactly this guy what we was wanted janitor to do. for Microsoft. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's a good job. Moving, <laughs> moving on. I take eighty thousand dollars a year. I take it at this point. According to the New York <laughs> Times um, interview with several current and former members of the board HP board directors um, and people close to them. They found that in the search and hiring, or resulting hiring, of Mr. Apaker, they found that uh, many of the 
board members did not even meet with him. Mm -hmm. They hired him without meeting with him. Yeah. So they just hired him blind then. Yeah. Uh, apparently. Um, Why are they doing this? Why don't? What's the point behind it? They're well, that fucking stupid or what? <laughs> I, I think personally, that board members are lazy. I think it's guaranteed money. It's well, not a job. As a quote from one of the board members, yeah. I admit it. It was highly unusual. We were just too exhausted from all the infighting. Oh, oh so, so they are lazy. Yeah. Oh, I well, had to eat my caviar and sit here and do nothing. Well, that's what's funny about him is that the board members were mad at them, but then they, when they were supposed to hire someone, they didn't do any work at yeah. all. What a bunch of assholes. Yeah, I know. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to get this along because I got a lot. Um, so he was hired. He was hired uh, after seven months as the CEO of SAP to uh, the HP CEO. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Incidentally, when was, after when was he hired? Um, he was hired September of 2010. Okay. After leaving SAP, uh, apparently he was accused by Oracle of masterminding a uh, massive yes. intellectual property theft ring, mm -hmm. which uh, Oracle won, and then it's got retrialed or something stupid. Which there was a lot of bad. So ideas. basically, he was fired amid controversy. After he was fired, he was controversial, and now he's hired the HP. <laughs> <laughs> um, last month, after, with the blessing of the board of directors, he announced a plan for HP to either spin off, or maybe not, their computer business to make profits. And they also, at the same time, announced that they were going to spend $10 billion to acquire Autonomy Corps, which is a UK software it's company. huge, yeah. yeah. I, I got to say, though, this is so funny, because Mark Hurd grew that company a lot yeah. off of hardware. And then they're like, oh, fuck hardware. Well, well we're going to get that in a second. They're going to split off hardware and it, call it Quickster. Incidentally, Quick this is basically... <laughs> basically, this is undoing what the compact bought thing basically yeah you know 10 years prior but um the reason they want to do this they want to focus more on software correct they want to uh serve more software as a service etc and they yeah, want to get out of the pc business because the margins right. are small on yeah. pcs i suppose you know mm -hmm. right um by spinning out basically it would cut the company's revenue by a third but increase profit margins by a lot because that's important i guess um, <laughs> bad business, fucking stupid. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Apparently, uh, it's, uh, HP's PC and printer business is half of their revenue. So actually, yes. their printer yeah. be business is most yes. of their profits. Most of their profits. Yeah. Right? yeah. I, why are these people valuing margins over profits? I, I don't, don't understand. Know. Here's the funny thing, though. When they were talking about rolling out personal services, they explicitly said, "We are not getting rid of printing, though." Yeah, because they, 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 oh, yeah, they make they so much on not. their printers. They, yeah. they wouldn't Incidentally, this it. is basically what uh, IBM did with Lenovo several years back. Yeah, but see, right. IBM, IBM went all the way into yeah. the... Like, they jumped in the deep end of the pool. I mean, they got rid of their hardware within 10 years. They don't make hardware anymore. So, yeah. so um, basically, since he's been CEO for about 11 months, the company's share price has dropped 40% oh, oh. or so. <laughs> While the NASDAQ, which is what it's part of, has gained about 1.6%. So they're not doing so hot. Yeah. yeah they're, they're not meeting trends. Yeah. So the uh, <laughs> board of directors isn't happy, and so they sack him. Um, basically, the, it says uh, board of directors turn to Meg Whitman, who is their, now their CEO. Oh, oh my fucking yeah. God. <laughs> One of the worst CEOs in the history of making moves. Yeah, she was a board member before she became the CEO. Right, she yeah. was, yes. Yeah. So um, before I even go on to make what, incidentally, uh, Apotheker has uh, took, taken home most of his $1.2 million salary, a $4 million signing bonus, and a $4.6 million. Signing bonus. A $4.6 million <laughs> awarded to uh, relocate. What, what team did he join? What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Are yeah. you kidding also, me? Yeah. Also, he's got to take home $7.2 in severance and $18 million more in stock. So I, 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 said, this, <laughs> I said this to Ryan. I, I said... I said, think about this. These fuckers are one of the biggest outsourcers in our country. HP is a huge outsourcer. They they talk about how they're job creators, right? Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. guy, they paid him so much. I did a calculation. They could hire 625 people at $40,000 a year for what they paid him for that one year. They yep. could have. They could have hired six hundred and twenty. Well, how much? People. How much of that was his actual pay? It was just like there was a signing well, bonus. There's stocks. There was getting rid of them. The stocks of four million to bring them up from Germany over to the. Are yeah. you fucking kidding me? Hey, you know you got to put stuff on a fucking boat. <laughs> That's hard. You got to have people watch so, um, that boat and drive it. Meg Probably has a lot of heavy furniture. Yeah, Meg Whitman. IKEA. I really does. She doesn't really need an introduction. One of the worst CEOs ever to have existed had a. Golden goose, golden egg with fucking eBay, and she completely ruined that company. Yeah. I'm already over Horrible. time, so I'm just going to end with this quote from Meg Whitman. Quote, <laughs> I have run a large company, not obviously as large as HP, but I have run a very large company. 
Well, I don't have years of experience in enterprise business. I have bought a lot of software. I was one of the largest enterprise customers in Silicon Valley. So HP, I have a proposition for you. Hire me as your CEO. Pay me a million dollars. I don't need a signing bonus, no severance package. Give me a million bucks, and I'll run your company to the ground. I'm yeah. gonna. I, I, bought, I bought a lot of software. I bought software. Totally. I'm gonna. I'm gonna apply at a uh, construction firm as the lead construction uh, like planner. And yeah. I'm just gonna be like. Dude, I built so much shit out of Legos. You don't even know. Yeah, so it's many so Legos. No, I no, had buckets that, of those. That's too shit. much. You have bought things that were built. That, that's, <laughs> that's what she's true. saying. That's true. I bought houses. I do want to say real quick. She bought Skype for three billion dollars in two thousand one. She sold it back to the guys she bought it from for two point five billion dollars four years later after it lost them over a billion dollars. And then Skype three years later sold it to Microsoft. For almost nine billion dollars, <laughs> that makes her one of the worst CEOs <laughs> of all time. That is completely retarded. It's, incidentally, um, it is Amazon is rumored to be thinking about buying Palm, which HP acquired for you a know, while, and now obviously yeah, I want to say something too. Yeah, I, I will. Oh, let's go ahead. I'm they sorry. drop a Google list. If you're just related to that, say. I oh yeah, I was just gonna say I think Amazon will do a better job with Palm than HP will. Well. Maybe. Yeah, I, I just think. I'm just looking forward to Meg Whitman trying to buy RIM in like two years and then to come. This, to this is your prediction, yeah. and I think it's a good prediction. I think th- it's another one plus one equals 1. 1.5. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. So I want to say I work for a company that has 6,000 HP servers. So that's, you know, probably a couple million. 20 million yeah. Yeah. worth yeah. of servers. And uh, they're the best ones out there. We have some Dell ones, and they suck ass. Yes, they so do. So most, yeah. most companies use Dell because they're way cheaper, but. They're not as good. They're like a 40% fail rate on drives and dims and all mm-hmm. that shit. So. Also, ironically, I did this entire presentation on an HP touchpad I got for $99. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to get one of those, too. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work not. out. So, no. sorry. Because of eBay. Thanks, fuck, Meg Whitman. Yeah, fuck you, Meg Whitman. <laughs> fucking PayPal and all this shit. Uh, 13 minutes. Sorry about that. That's That's that was fine. pretty long. <laughs> Anyways, let's... uh. Let's get back to what we're really good at, drinking. Yeah. <laughs> it's not about how yeah. to make drinking fun. I just have to put it in my mouth. Yeah, me too. Or like my dicks. asshole. <laughs> I'm like, has to get drunk faster, man. Right. Um, <laughs> I can teach you a lot about drinking games, but uh, let me tell you about the history of drinking games. This the is history. two sentences. <laughs> <laughs> One, they were first documented about four about 500 to 400 BC in Greece were the first drinking games. So they actually, it's a long time ago. People have been drinking for fun to get drunk for a long time. And they played a game called Kotabos, which basically is the stupidest game I've ever heard of. And also, I would totally play it. What they would do is they would have wine and they would have the fermented yeast, which is like a, a called like a laius or mm-hmm. like a lees or something. Yeah. And they would have the fermented yeast in their cup. And they would fling it out of the cup and try to hit a target on the wall. That's, that sounds that awesome. That was the whole, I would play that game all I the time. I think that game sounds kind of boring, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but you had to, you had to not, uh, the yeast had to not break up in the air. So it just smash against the wall, like explode. So awesome. That's a game. But, uh, sounds cool. But anyway, you guys don't want to you hear think about that. There was the... people like with affliction shirts on and like a, a fig leaf around their balls and they're like, yo man, did you totally hit the fig? Yeah, did you get the yeast? Probably. It was probably kind of like that. I think it was an Olympic game for a while. (laughs) That's possible. Um, But you guys don't want to hear about the history. You want to hear about the best drinking games. That's what everyone wants to hear about. Um, I mostly talk about games that I know and that we have played at some point. Um, But I, I, I threw in another few. So there's a huge variety of drinking games that require different skills. Many of them are just based on drinking and not based on anything else. Yeah. Those are, in my opinion, the worst games. Like games like who can drink the fastest and like things like that. Beer. Like yeah. Flip Cup. Yeah. yeah. Flip. Everyone drinks no matter who wins. There's at least <laughs> a little game in that. There no, is, because if you lose, there's no difference. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the problem I have with those games is that there, there's no condition. You don't get a reward for winning or losing, so there's no point. Um but most drinking games now, I mean, really, those drink are things like speed drinking, beer bongs, keg stands. Those are all technically games, but really they're I've just... I've 40 in- hands. Yeah, well, <laughs> those are mostly... In- that one's fun for one reason, though. <laughs> those are endurance challenges, though. They're not really games. Now, real games have, uh, have a skill involved, uh, like in my dice. opinion, anyway. Well, the, the, <laughs> a lot of those, they go from being, like, really easy to uh, being pretty complex, but the... There's this like the some games have almost no skill, whereas others require actual 
you, you know, you have to actually be able to do something. So, like, games like, as he was mentioning, uh, dice games, there's, there's quite a few of those. Uh, one, for example, that we play a lot is Three Man. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. It's Which is a, our favorite. It's a great game. I that for my cousin. Oh, brought, really? And I brought it here, much like Pilgrims. It's an easy game to play, um, but it's it's simple. And the, the reason Three Man's fun isn't because it's really great. It's just because people get into it. And that's when it's I, fun. so fast. It's because yeah, once you know, get bored, basically. There are other dice games, though. Like, um, if you've ever played Ship of Fools, I've played that before. I haven't played that. It's... It's all right. And there's one called Inviter, which is kind of funny. You can only play it in a bar, and apparently when you roll... It's only one die, but when you roll a six, you have to go and invite someone else to come drink with you to try and get more oh, people in the game, which is kind of a funny game. Uh, I, I will say, though, with Three Man, um, the, the funniest thing about Three Man is when someone is new to that game and then drunk people try to explain that game, and then the person gets all discouraged. They're like, man, this game sounds way too complicated. It's like, no, no, just play, just play. You have just to play. just play, yeah. and then you, you understand Within, like, instantly. one round of turns, they're like, oh, dude, I get it. It so, does, like, start playing. It's also great when the person's too drunk to know what to do, and you just tell them to drink. Yeah. <laughs> one of the most That's interesting things about drinking games, though, that I like the most, actually, about them is that drinking games often feature house rules. Now, yeah, I love the, house the idea rules. of house rules is that no drinking games are really alike, exactly alike, between different houses that people play them in. So whoever owns the house <laughs> is the one who decides what the rules are, and that's just how it works. So, like, in, in Three Man, a one dice roll might mean something normally, but then it might be different in someone else's house. You're like, no, no, this is how it works. It's funny, because no one ever argues either. It's like, oh, yeah. shit. No, the I've people seen a house rule re revolt. At one really? house, because pe these people had convoluted rules where they played two, it was beer pong, and they played two six-cup setups. Well, we're going to talk about beer yeah. pong later. Oh, I'm just saying that, yeah, So uh, I've seen revolts. So you also got games like Quarters, which is a very simple game, mm -hmm. but but it's 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 all right for, for a little bit, but it doesn't last long, like usually. Want to fuck up um, a table? Basically, you, yeah, yeah that'll, uh, that'll fuck up your table, but you bounce Quarters into a cup. Now, there's also Chandeliers, if you ever played that, which is Quarters, except everyone has their own cup. And there's a shot glass in the middle, and that that oh, gets that. that gets pretty crazy. I've played that once. So if you hit it in the shot glass, you got to drink the quarter shot glass. Mm. Well, if you get it in the shot glass, I think other people have to drink. I don't. I don't you get remember. To choose someone. It's probably, been a while yeah. since I played it, and again, house, house rules. rules. So you don't. Know, it's different every time. <laughs> um, there's also. I drink it. Some of my favorites are film and TV drinking games, which yes. uh, are Good. really stupid because they're not really games. They're more like there's a set condition and you just <laughs> drink when it happens. We're pretty good at that. Um, <laughs> now, one, one example is like people would be like, uh, one I made up is drink whenever you hear a saxophone in Lethal Weapon. Like that's, <laughs> there's like things like that, you know. But... Uh, but there's also really good ones, like one that we've played before is Mustache, where you, yes. you tape a mustache to the screen. Whenever someone's face has, the mu has your mustache on it, everyone else drinks. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also other ones, like um, one that I found on Wikipedia that's, that I think is hilarious is you have to try and match all the drinks that With Nail drinks in With Nail and I. Have you ever seen that movie? No. I have seen it, yeah. He, I don't remember it that well. Though. He drinks an amount that would kill you if you tried to follow it, but people try to do it. He also drinks a shot of lighter fluid. So, um, but, so there's that. There's also, um, there's also a lot of card games. Card yeah, games, card games are... make for good drinking games. Uh, the most famous and probably the, the one that I actually never play is King Cup. No one wants Oh, uh, man, King Cup. Everyone has their own horrible King Cup uh, King Cup, thing. yeah. King Cup has a lot of stories Mixing around it. Mixing beer, not beer. On the subject yeah. of yeah. Uh, house rules, Mao is pretty much the, the epitome of house rules. Yeah, it game. changes every time, yeah. yeah. Um, pretty fun. King Cup's a dangerous game where cards are spread around a cup, and whoever gets king has to drink what out of the cup. The worst basically. part is a lot of times people aren't drinking the same yeah, thing. Like yeah, they all get cup. Yeah, and it's all mixed. warm anyway. Yeah, Ugh. I had I had to drink thirty two ounces out of a NASCAR cup once of <laughs> warm Rolling Rock and Corona mixed together. It was the most disgusting thing <laughs> ever. Also, there's a shot of something in it. Too, you, that you, you drank that entire things. chili beer. Oh <laughs> God, that was oh yeah. Right. Jesus. So there's that also worse, um honestly there's also another great card game oh. that that people often play is uh, asshole and asshole. I like asshole a lot. That's a fun President game. I don't mind asshole. Um, the problem with it though is that the game is great for an, for about twenty or thirty minutes. And then what happens is the president keeps becoming president every time because he has an unfair advantage, right. and it can ruin the game. But uh, but it's a fun game for a while. Um, 
So you obviously, haven't talked about the two best ones yet. Have well, you? no, I'm going to talk about a couple more. Best ones. And two. There's my favorite. My favorite commonly known drinking game. Everyone knows this game is Beirut or beer pong. Beer, and beer pong's fun. It's a great game, and it, it. But the problem with beer pong is that you have to have the right setting for it. You need a good table. You need to have ping pong balls. You have to beer. have shitty cheap beer. Yeah, but it's a great game, and there are again with house rules. We made up house rules for beer pong where if you bounce or if you throw the ball into a cup that someone's holding with beer in it, they have to drink three cups. If you bounce it in, you then win. you automatically win, which I have actually done one time, <laughs> yeah. and we we freaked out. It was the greatest. I moment. actually saw that at a at a at a party once, and the woman was flaunting. Like going like yeah whatever because they were way behind yeah and it bounced off her huge tits and fell in the cup <laughs> and so her taunting made them lose everything they had to drink like fourteen beer that's why, that's why you have to use shitty beer because if you win with good beer it's like oh who cares if you yeah. play with people that aren't serious they end up fucking up the game oh yeah beer pong's beer pong can get intense. Um, and so lastly, we're going to talk about weird drinking games. Um, that <laughs> I hope the two are in here. The, well, there's one that's definitely in here, and we played it one time, it was the and it was a really great time yeah, that we had playing it. Um, that game is Wisest Wizard, and oh. I'll <laughs> explain Wisest Wizard very, very quickly. Um, you got to have cheap canned beer. Each person also needs a wizard hat and a name tag. <laughs> Um, the name tag, they write their wizard name, and if someone doesn't refer to you as your wizard name, you have to give up part of your staff. Now, the way it works is everyone has a wizard staff that's composed of the, the cans of beer that they're drinking, which are taped, duct taped to each other Yeah, so the full can is on the top, and when you finish it, you put a can on top of it, duct tape, and yeah. eventually Now, you the idea is staff. you win by having the longest staff at the end of the night, usually when everyone passes out, but... Um, when you drink four, every time you drink four beers, you have to beat a boss, and that means you have to do a shot between <laughs> your beers. Um, and the other, like the other the thing about Jose it is, Cuervo. you can steal <laughs> someone else's staff when they're if they don't if they leave it unattended. Yes. If, if it's attached to their staff before um, before you notice, then you lose your staff and have to start over. Uh, so a lot of the, toward the end of the night, usually it's composed of people trying to steal other people's staffs. And that's but, how I won. Yeah, you you got my staff. I remember yeah, that. And, because someone and stole I had like, mine, and then I was like, I'm gonna steal. I had like staff. seven, <laughs> and you stole it. Um, so that that's that's good too. And that game was a great game. Um, and who you know, whoever has the biggest staff wins. I don't think we ever that's play fun. it again because so one, we'll, we'll, we drank turtle beer. Yeah. Kaguama. <laughs> Kaguama. That's yeah. Um, two. The that your floors were covered in beer. Yeah, because when you have to tape your beer, yeah, it destroyed our house. It was <laughs> that place ruined not, our house. You want to have tar? You gotta, you gotta have hardwood floors. So yeah, yeah, you need. You just need to put down tar. It needs to be like Gallagher. <laughs> just put tar what, everywhere. What were you guys' names? You guys remember? I don't remember. My I, name. I, I, I was. was I was like uh, District Attorney Levin Foil or something. I was like <laughs> King Papadopoulos, I think, or something. I, know, like I remember uh, yeah, was, Silent Roommate had the best one. He was Count Abuntis. <laughs> yeah. Count Abuntis. <laughs> yes, I, I remember that. You were like third base coach or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was like, oh, they're great. Okay, and then <laughs> lastly is my personal favorite yes, drinking game one. because I invented it. And it's probably the thing I'm most proud of in my oh, entire God, life. God, I forgot it's about it. Good. I mean, we always one. forget about it. We always forget. It. You know, I'm really proud of this game. I really think it's a great game. And every time we've played it, people have a good time. Yeah, every people we don't time. know will love it. Um, the, thing, the one thing you have to have is a computer probably hooked up to a TV. Because you need a lot of room around the computer. Yeah. And you've got to be able to see. But um, this game's great for big parties. And what it's called is Shot or Not. And what you do is you go to the website hotornot.com, and what you have to do is you have to rate the people based on what you think the, the ratings will be on the website. So if, you, if someone pops up and you go, this person's an 8.2, and then the website says, you know, 8.7, yeah, after you, you have vote, to take a drink. It goes up in the top left or top right corner and shows you the score that yeah, person has. Exactly. Asks. And so, so you have to have at least 50 votes for it to count because a lot of them have like too one, few votes and yeah. it, it scales. It doesn't work. But, um, but basically, the idea is that for every 0.5 points you are off, you have to take a drink. And, but if you get the exact number, 
everyone else has to take a drink. And right, you just I think we have a, a secondary rule. If that person has under 50 votes, it yeah, doesn't matter. If you just go to the next yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's um, so this, this game is great because the drunker you get, the more beer goggles you have on. Also, yeah. it's an inherently racist super game. Super racist. Hot, yeah. hot or not, super racist. It's great because you're around new people, and you'll see this hot you like, have to African tell. American woman. You'll be like, seven and a half. And they're like, dude, you're, you're fucking racist. I'm like... You don't know. Yeah, you, you have know. to. The internet. You That's don't actually know this is how, game. The way we introduce the game to people is telling them if the person is black, take a point off. Uh, take a point off. <laughs> yeah. If they're another minority, usually take half a point Unless off. Unless Asian. Unless it's an Asian yeah. woman, then, then you give a point. add a point. Yeah, basically, if there's cleavage. And, it's like nine point five. It's an Asian rounds. man yeah. minus two points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so it, it really that game is great, and I'm very very proud of that game. Yeah. And I don't think we've ever publicly talked about no. This people game. should play that. It's you a, really should. You really should play game. it. We used to have a uh, write up who, like official rules in the show notes. Remember who told you that we, shit? We had a background image on the back of our, on the on the desktop of the computer we used to play it on. It was a <laughs> it was a guy with a like a camo vest. <laughs> a camo vest. He had a beer gut sticking yeah. out, yeah. bald on the top, bald on the top with like holding a gun. Holding a gun in front of his chest, it was 9.4. 9.4. Yeah. <laughs> Hundreds of votes. We all said like seven or something. Like that. <laughs> Did that hurt? Whoever had to that, do was, that vote. Yeah. So uh, that's all I really got to say about drinking games. I think I talked about some yeah. good ones. You know, there's a lot more, and obviously you can look them up online. It's not really hard to find them, but um, but those are some great ones. And if you're having a party, you should definitely try one of those out. I really do recommend. Setting it up and having a, a full-fledged game of Wisest Wizard yeah. because yeah. that was a great right, time. Down. Put down some tarp. Yeah. yeah, Wisest Wizard is a rough game. But just make everyone play outside. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> that's too. That, that's probably a good idea. In Phoenix, that's not possible though. Yeah. yeah. It's too hot. Um, okay. Well, we're not. We're gonna skip. It. I don't think there was any questions really, but we're gonna skip it anyways. Do you have a who's next week? Oh yeah. Um, I fine. I actually forgot to look it up. Okay. Yeah. Start looking it up. It was in order. Yeah. Um. So, tell us about Terra Nova. <laughs> actually, no, what we're going to do first, actually, is, so so Benson, Ryan, and I had not seen the show, so we're supposed to give a synopsis of what we think it is, just from the I have the to trailer. go last, because I know the basic plot. Okay, so. so so this is what I wrote. I said, looks like Swiss Family Robinson with dinosaurs, <laughs> and that dude from Avatar playing that dude from Avatar. <laughs> a co-worker of mine also said it felt like the mid-90s NBC bomb, Earth 2, with dinosaurs. And it really does look like Earth 2 with dinosaurs. Um, also, there is some future shit, but I'm guessing that there that's just a setup to get to prehysteria, Terra Nova. So. The only thing you're right on was the Avatar guy. Uh, <laughs> damn it. My, mine is very short. I basically said that I think it looks like a, a cross between Lost and Jurassic Park, but worse than both somehow. <laughs> and uh, that... One plus one there, equals 1.5. <laughs> and, that, and that there were... Uh, there, there are people shooting at dinosaurs, which makes it probably hilarious to watch because I, I want to see something where people fight dinosaurs with guns. Um, like Jurassic Park, but like more, more crazy. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but I have a feeling, I had a feeling just seeing the commercial because that's the only thing I saw about it, is that it's way p- more plot heavy than it should be because it's a show with dinosaurs and people. So there should be almost no plot. For the, for what you said, it is like Lost and kind of like Jurassic Park. Not really, but... Oh, okay. Okay, so I saw the it's, actual synopsis yeah. of it. Um, according to what I saw, it looked like the Earth is sucks because of pollution. So they went back in time to dinosaur time <laughs> to start a new why like society. Go, why did they just go back to like you know 1700s? That's I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good they went back to dinosaur time, but uh, like their know. technology broke and now they can't get back or something. Now who cares? I have no argument against that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so tell us what it is. I'm so, excited. Yeah, I guess there was it was released as a two parter. There was a, they released. First two episodes in the same day, but I only watched the first one, and it was only like thirty-eight minutes long. So this is all from just thirty-eight minutes. Man, they must have a this. shit ton of commercials. Yeah, they always do that. Twenty yeah. minutes. Yeah, no, no it's usually like forty. I downloaded minutes. it, and it was just one whole big thing. So I didn't know where it was. I had to look up where it was supposed to start. Short. So, so like Ryan was saying, okay, so they're in the twenty-second century, and the world it has, shows like an outside picture of the Earth, and it just says we're in the twenty-second century now, and the world is dying because of environmental problems. Right. So now they have Al to do Gore. something. <laughs> so the first shot they show is New York in the future, and it looks like Wally, where everything's you know just all like tan and gray and it's a, it's a shitty. In, it's an inconvenient exposition. Yeah. yeah. And then um, 
I, I don't. I don't want to go and explain all this because I just want to talk about some plot problems. But just basic things. People in order to in order to breathe that wear a breathing apparatus outside because it's so bad. It's like a big a mask that just goes over your mouth, like a SCBA or something like that. Scuba without underwater. So it's like living in Mexico City now. Yeah. So and then <laughs> or, the, or and then or the, the, so the main character is there's the main characters is a family, a mom, a dad, and three kids. Oldest is a son. The two youngest are two girls, and one's a really young girl, like three years old. So. So there's population control in this world. They don't want people to have any more than two kids. They, they go around and check people's premises to see if they have a third kid. Yeah. So they go, the first shot is the family in their house, and then the cops knock on the door and say, Hey, heard you got a third kid. I don't say that, but you know, it's pretty much like kid. that. So they, yeah, like so they kick them out of the house <laughs> 30 to, lost to, to search for it, and they're just like throwing tables looking for kids. Like, what if this kid was under this table? He's going to murder him? <laughs> just throwing shit around. So they hit the kid in like an AC vent, and they find her. They take her. And uh, the husband goes crazy and starts just punching the cops and beating the shit out of them. They're, these guys like almost like thought police because he's also a cop, but they're like really high. They're like, oh no, we're gonna get him. We're gonna get your kid. Equilibrium. So he gets arrested. <laughs> he gets arrested for you know beating the shit out of them. Mm-hmm. And of course, you know, he had a third kid when he wasn't supposed to. And the very next scene, two years later, in prison. He's in prison. His wife comes by. And, you know, gives him a little laser cutter to get help him get out. Wait, they jumped two years in the pilot? Yes. That's bullshit. And That's then, lazy. And then she, she goes there to tell him that she's been selected for Terra Nova. Terra Nova is, you don't really know yet, but I, it, what it is is it's, you know, they go, like Ryan said, into the past because the world is dying. So they live in the live in the past. So, you know, they have the resources and the environment's not gone to shit. I'll let you finish, but I have so many questions about this whole time travel shit. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I will get yeah. into that. <laughs> so, um, then uh, there's another scene that's this. He's he, when he when he gets out of prison, he goes on like a subway to get to go with her to Terra Nova or whatever to get in the. It's a portal. They mm-hmm. go in the portal, and he's not allowed there, but he gets there anyway. And there's a scene on the bus where he just all of a sudden he's cutting his leg open, and he pulls a tracking device out and just throws it on the ground. But they never showed him put it in or anything. Just something out of nowhere, like they deleted the early part. Years, fuck you. Fucking stupid. So they, they eventually get they okay so this is what this is what happens in this Terra Nova place they're like inside a corridor it looks almost exactly like Stargate where they're walking towards the portal there's like hundreds of yeah, people in there I saw that in the tr- hundreds in the of commercial. people have been selected to go to Terra Nova as it's called so they're all walking towards the portal it's like one guy at a time there's all these guys with armed guns and stuff and then the whole family goes in but the dad had to run in past him because he wasn't allowed so he had to knock guys over and shit. So he gets through there, but before they go so through this, stupid. before they go through this, you know they all, they know that oh we're going to go 85 million years in the past. <laughs> don't don't even say anything yet. And no. then uh, and then they all say in this world it's going to be there's this, there's sunlight there. There's no sun in the, in the 22nd yeah. century, so there's going to be doctors there to help you cope with this. How the what? fuck do they know this? How the fuck do they? Know? There's no way. <laughs> yeah. There's no way they can communicate with so anyone on the other the side. Dirt. It's all up the dirt. Yeah. Is this some lake lake house <laughs> shit? Okay. okay. So, by the way, if you go to the past, dudes, we'll totally be here from Doctor Dinosaur. <laughs> so if they left the note from the past to the future, Dude, wouldn't that everyone? Seems- just- what did everyone in the past <laughs> fuck up the future more? This is like the grandfather well, wait, paradox. So, no, this is another thing I said. So I, maybe, you know, these doctors went through, through like three minutes before and they said, oh, they're going to be there just so oh, you okay. guys get there. But how do they, how do they <laughs> know what, what that's, they have a problem with sunlight in the first place? How can uh, they possibly know that? How do you know the doctors haven't they, been eaten by dinosaurs? Yeah, yeah. no, no, they, oh, wait, well, they well, let me go like on archaeology that. Archaeology and stuff, but, art. Then the first thing I thought on. is, what? so this portal, no one can ever communicate once, well, they, apparently they can't, but they shouldn't be able to, so we'll, so, how do they know where it's going to go? What if they, like, land over the ocean? What if there's a T-Rex just spawn camping this portal <laughs> forever? <laughs> He's like, he just, like, oh, just, he just, he just sits there for decades just Dude. getting free kills all day long. <laughs> it's just like a, it's like a room of dinosaurs just waiting for humans to come through. <laughs> they build a house around yeah. it. And there's, like, no, there's no communication. You never know this happens. Like, yeah, we're going to be free in the world. With Let's go to the magic fire. food spot again. Theodore, you're on watch. <laughs> It's fucking yeah. bad. And they all, and trips, once, over, trips over. Once they all get through, it's like, okay, we got to head to, I can't remember what the base of operations is, but we got to head there. I'm like, how do they know this too? <laughs> how do they know any of the shit is there? It can never communicate unless there's 85 million year old piece of note that said, oh yeah, we just built this right Dude, here. This and is Dino is Lake planet, House. Here's the thing though, oh like God. the earth, the land was in different positions. Yeah. So even if they had like latitude, longitude, it wouldn't work because they would be off be by different. like no. miles. Don't don't even say that yet because they've introduced Sorry. a plot device to do that. But once oh, once, they, oh, once they get once they, they get it, they thought of everything. No, once they no, then they didn't think of everything. 
<laughs> Once again, it shows the Avatar guy, and it's like, oh, he's like, everyone knows he's the commander. I'm like, how do they know this too? Yeah. They had a seminar off camera during the two years that was time skip. Also, they I showed them Avatar. I just want to say, sky. these fucking idiots go back 85 million years. Just so they could fuck up the planet 85 million years ago. It's only taken like another 5,000 years to fuck it up again. I, I heard, I did hear one thing about this show that they're in an alternate, uh, like, reality. Dimension. Don't yeah, say, reality. Don't, don't, okay. oh, don't say that yet. Sorry. So, yeah, so, you know, they go back 85 million years. They're just going to fuck it up in 5,000 years. Well, so it's going to be Yeah, but they're all dinosaurs, dinosaurs Priuses, still. Man. So there will be dinosaurs still, though. I don't know. Well, let's go back again. So, okay. <laughs> Redo. Then, uh, yeah. There's, so, there's so, much, so many fucking problems with this. So then, uh, you know, the dad was in prison for two years, and he meets up with his really young daughter that was three years old, and she's now like five years now, yeah. five years old. And she's like, oh, I don't even, I, the daughter doesn't even know who I am now because I've been gone for so long because she's so young. And I was like, wait a second. She knows who the mom is perfectly? Didn't the mom get arrested? Didn't they take the girl away? <laughs> No, none of that happened. They said, oh, well, you got three kids. Ah, oh, fuck it, whatever. Yeah, so why, why the fuck did he fight these kid. police officers to get arrested? That's, really just, <laughs> that's, that's that's a very good point. That makes no sense. So, I, have a, I have a question, too, after your question. Well, just keep going. You can just keep okay. going. I'll so then another after. thing I noticed is the first dinosaur they show is a Brachiosaurus, just like in Jurassic Park. And it looks ten times worse than it does in Jurassic Park. This is, you know, years later. Spielberg. The, the Terra Nova yeah. set looks exactly like San Diego Zoo. Like you're oh. walking, like, like that. <laughs> San Diego Zoo has the same thing. That's so funny. then they introduce plot device. First of all, the, the kids are going around because they have to go to this orientation thing, and there's this thing well, called. Did they have orientation before. They <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Sorry, keep keep going. No. So <laughs> this thing orientation. called the, the, orientation. the second, the middle girl says, "Oh my god, it's the probe." I'm like, "What the fuck is that?" <laughs> it's just a circular rock thing. It looks like. Like, the, the, and then the son's like, "What's the probe?" <laughs> He's like, don't you know? Everyone knows what the probe is. <laughs> so that's Slayer got hit by. So she says the probe is what the first thing they ever sent through the portal, and the probe proves since they never found the probe later on in life, it proved that it's a different time dimension that th- whatever they do in that world does not affect the new world. Okay, first of all, if you put something in the portal, how do you know it's going to a different time frame? How do you know it's not just disintegrating into nothing? How do you know it doesn't land in the ocean and they, what, they checked every single foot of every inch of the entire world to find this probe? So, how do you know it's not in also, there? Also, wouldn't it deteriorate after yeah, 85 I know. million years? <laughs> what if it landed in the Mariana Strait and it went 13,000 under, 13 feet This plot device just made things way worse. <laughs> they, hey, I explained it. I, I, explained I really it. thought this was a plot device no. to help them communicate between the worlds. No, nothing. None, nothing about that at all. Dude, that's so dude. funny. Dude, this, I, this, I, this, I had her. Not, not seeing, this is only 30 not, minutes into the show. Not seeing the rest of the show, I guarantee you, like, episode 8 this season, they're going to find that fucking probe in, no, no, like, the, 2020 or something. Oh. Oh, dude. Uh, actually, you're, you're so right. Fucking you're right. right. Yeah. Yeah. You're so fucking right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And they're going to find, like, I don't oh, know if well, actually, dude. I really don't think you'll ever totally. go back to the 22nd century world. So. Did they really? Did they know, yeah. uh, this is a question I had, did they know that it lands them in an alternate reality basically see that's what that's what i'm saying about the probe they said oh yeah since we know we put it in the portal we never found it i guess it has to be an alternate reality how okay. could they possibly know so that if, if they, they know that they, though if the person first person went through they can't communicate back how would they ever know where this goes but if they know that though also so also just on the most basic level how does this project benefit them at all it's not. They wouldn't even be born in that reality because it's going to be completely different than well, their own. Twenty twenty. So, they just want to get rid of people for population control. Yeah. And Maybe they just send them really back. Just like get these fuckers out of here. It's too many. Throw so these in the sixteen hundreds. Throw so these in the fifteen. Like, whatever. There's no, just get around. There's there no benefit actually, to them whatsoever. Actually, what, what they're doing, doing is they're kids, they're, when they go through the portal, they die, but they're really in purgatory, and then they have to wander around an island forever. Well, maybe. <laughs> having, having said that, let's get to the worst part of the show. <laughs> the worst. The worst what? part is oh. the goddamn motherfucking son, the oldest son. Oh my god, I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> the this, son that gives no, him light. No. The son. He's teenage kid. angst mixed with, mixed with like badass, cool hipster teenager guy oh. who hates his dad because he went to prison for helping his family. No, fuck <laughs> you, dad. Oh my, I, 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 I just want to kill this character instantly the second he talks. I'm like the rest of the show. It's like, ah, oh, this show's stupid. The plot's dumb. But this character is just... Oh, I just want to murder it. So I have, like, some uh, some ratings for this show. I want acting for the main characters. I put uh, I put 4 out of 10, and then I said... Then I changed it to 3 out of 10 once the Avatar old man badass came into the show. So it, yeah, he's not good. It went down a notch. <laughs> and the, the son brought it down a lot, too, because he's terrible. So then the characters, like, they have, like, one or two lines. Like, oh, yeah, follow this line towards Terra Nova. Those guys are... Two out of ten. They're, they're garbage. <laughs> they're so bad. I'm like laughing when I hear these lines. <laughs> the writing is... 
it's three out of ten because the dialogues, you know, they don't really, they didn't really spout as much exposition as I thought. But you know, they didn't. They does, it doesn't work at all. World. But it doesn't work at all. So it doesn't matter. Sense, yeah. So it's garbage. And I actually said the directing was by far the best part because just like camera just, or well, just everything because the show is watchable until any scene with a kid. I want to walk out of the room, but <laughs> without the kid, I can watch it and be like, ah, oh, this show's stupid, whatever. But with that kid, it's just so bad. <laughs> So that was. Uh, so did they find any dio DNA? No, they didn't. No. <laughs> well, I have no reason to watch. So uh, you're totally right, though. End of season one, they're gonna find out that. Yeah, bro. They really didn't show much about dinosaurs. So I didn't put the second episode. Clever girl. <laughs> you could have also played. That is the dumbest thing. <laughs> yeah. What dumber now in this room? <laughs> yeah. Dude, that. that. That sounds. That was only the oh. 37, 37 minutes of the show. So. <laughs> Oh my god! Wow! How was that only four? I put, oh yeah, That's I, I wrote an idea for the show: the core out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> the core, yeah. core, core out of ten. <laughs> um, oh yeah! So what you're going to be teaching about? It's a twofer. You're going to be right. teaching it's about oh, me, right? It's you, Michael. right? Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Michael. Next next week we'll be teaching us about weatherbug and gator. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's for me. Is it for you? Yeah. Well, that's well, then fine. You then you're teaching time. about weather bug and gator. You're going to have to install them. You're going to have to install them on your computer and learn about them. <laughs> yeah, you got to <laughs> check out all the features. And he, then after you're done, you get to format it. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay. So, top three movies. Uh, this, wow. We, uh, so, the top three movies for this weekend are, number one, Dolphin Tail. Oh, shocking. It, That's dude. so shocking to me. Fuck you, America. I hate you so much. I'm, I'm Should have gone seeing Lion King. I'm number two, away. Moneyball. Number three, Lion King. Okay. By the way, 50-50, which a lot of us picked as number one. Yes. Went number six. Yeah, that's insane. Um, I saw that movie. It was fantastic. It was a great movie. There was one problem with it, but they handled it well. It was just a bad idea from the get-go. Mm. But it's a secondary plot point. I would highly recommend that movie, though. Um, I went to that theater at 4 o'clock for a matinee, and it was full. And I was like, oh, it's good. This is good. People are wanting to see Which good movies. Which theater did you go to? Uh, Fashion Square, Scottsdale. Mm. And, Those are kind of full. Yeah, they're kind of busy. But, um, I mean, it was packed for a 4 o'clock show, yeah. and none of the other theaters were full. Um, and no, no one's gonna watch it. I don't, I don't understand. Why the fuck are you seeing a movie where the trailer has the entire movie in it? I know everything that happens in Dolphin Tail. I don't even fucking see it. Kids. Dolphin doesn't have a tail. Kids, kids. They build a tail for the dolphin. Dolphin swims with the new tail. The end. Morgan Freeman says shit in his fancy voice. <laughs> fuck you. Is he the narrator or something? Yeah. Well, he's not the narrator. He's a character. Oh, okay. He is, <laughs> he's he, the narrator. Yeah, he spouts exposition. This, this dolphin needs a tail. So it's March of <laughs> Penguins. It's the same yeah. movie. Yeah. So, only Ryan and Mike got one right. Yes! So that, so that puts me and Ryan tied for second. Benson's in first. Mike's we all so deserve nice. to be 0-3 in a way, because we all fucked up. So really next week, bad. I'm excited, Real Steel comes Dude. out. Dude. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Real Steel for a minute. I really... <laughs> it's Rock'em Sock'em Robots the movie. Yes. That's so, what it is. Uh, it's Rock'em well, When I heard about this box. and I saw that trailer, I was like, oh, yes. Yes. Do the second where they go. Real boxing out. It's all about robots. <laughs> let me let me, let me tell you something what? here. What's delicious? Let me tell you something here. This is the thing that bothers me about this movie. Okay, <laughs> now this movie is essentially battle bots. That's basically what the yeah. movie is. You make a robot and it fights. It fights in a ring, yeah. basically, right? So, but they hire or this guy. I don't know if they hire him, but the, out of he anyone they could go to, out of anyone himself. they could go to, to get to build this battle bot, they get a boxer. Not a person no, who's good no, at building you know, robots. He no, you, the yeah, robot. the way that works is it is like BattleBots, where they actually control the robot too. He doesn't just fight on his own. Okay, so he doesn't help build the robot. Uh, that's a plot point. It will be a spoiler in the trailer. Uh-huh. You can see it though. Yeah, he helps build it. Oh no, see. no, they they find one in the trailer or something like that. They find like an old, who decrepit cares? one. Whatever. I just, I, I, wouldn't an engineer be better for the job than a boxer? <laughs> I just don't understand. No, it's the amateur battle box. They go to professionals. I, I mean. see. They're moving up. Yeah. All right, so I picked mine. Up. Okay, so Real so, Steel, also another movie coming out is Ides of March with Ryan Gosling. Yeah. George Clooney might become president or some shit. But I don't know. Real Steel is like, those are, that's it. Nothing else is going to be in there. Okay. I guarantee. What were the last week's top ones? Dolphin Tail, Moneyball, Lion King. Lion King, I think, is out of theaters, though. 
because they're they're putting on Blu-ray this Tuesday. So okay, yeah. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do Moneyball number one. I'm gonna do Dolphin Why? Tale number two because I don't think that. Well, either that or Dolphin and Tale is going to be three? number one, and I don't want to be depressed. What's number number three? three will be, what, what did I say, Dolphin Tale number two? Uh, uh, number three, Ides of March. I think I think Real Steel's do. Really? Wow. Yeah, no. I, I don't got, think people want to do that. I disagree. I picked, I picked uh, Real Steel first because people are stupid, and that's how Lion King <laughs> got on last week. Um, Ides of March two because that's George Clooney. And then Dolphin Tale because fuck Dolphins. Yeah, but see, Ides of March is political, though, and people... Don't yeah, but it's Clooney. Thing. Fucking people see Clooney anyway. I picked... Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes. People go out and saw that Clooney movie where he was the unemployed fire person during the middle of the unemployment crisis. I picked Sorry, yeah. Ides, of, Ides of March, uh, Real Steel, then Dolphin Tail. So you switched one and two? Yeah. Well, I, I think Ides of March will do the best just because it has star power. Yeah, that's, that's the only that's reason. reason. Yeah. I don't think that at all because 50-50 made one number six. I mean, not big stars, but still. I picked Real Steel, Moneyball, Dolphin Tail. So. Okay. So we all got something different. Dude, Hugh Jackman watch, is a big pull. Watch, I, I, I bet you the fucking dolphin tail will go number one again, and I will kill myself. I don't think, I don't think <laughs> it'll go number himself. one. I really don't think it'll go number one again. I think, I I think that was, was a fluke, honestly. I, I couldn't believe that that and was I'm number one. And I'm actually going to see Real Steel. You know, <laughs> don't. <laughs> you know, I will, though, seriously, see 50-50 was a very good movie. So. I'd see Real Steel if I had the money to, because I think it'd be hilarious, hilarious yeah. but I'm not going to pay for it. I can't support it, though. I'd see yeah, Real Steel if someone... I want to You see saw it. Dragon Ball in theaters, come on. Dude, I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I you felt, felt bad, bad while you were watching it, yeah. because you were like, why did we I do well, this? Like, he was super <laughs> trash. Yeah, That's true, great. you were really, really drunk. All right, let's um, move on. Let's go top five. Yeah, we're going to run long this episode. Okay, so number number five... Uh, I named it Church or Go to Jail. Um, what happened in this one is... Oh, this, how uh, is this number sheriff. five? Yeah, dude, it's a bad week. It's a fucking bad... Yeah, we could have had top ten easy. Yeah, dude, it was a bad week. Uh, so this guy in uh, Alabama, let me get the Baymanette, Alabama, uh, the sheriff made a choice where you can either, for nonviolent misdemeanors where, that require jail time, uh, he says that you could go to jail and serve your sentence. Or you could, uh, you know, go to a church and go to that for a year, and you won't have to go to jail, and it will come off your record. Because so the first illegal. question I asked was, what churches? Any church? Uh, they have. Uh, let me look at the number again. I what think denominations? It's 40 church, there's 42 churches. What denominations on the list. is what I said. Uh, they're all Christian. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Can't now, go to a synagogue or no, mosque. No. Yeah. So, now, the, I, I just. Do you think this guy doesn't care? At all, or do you think he literally does not understand the separation of church understand. and state at all? Does he just not know? Well, actually, what they said is ACLU went, this is blatantly unconstitutional. Which it is. Yeah, absolutely. And so they went back and they asked him, hey, you know, ACLU is saying this is unconstitutional. What do you think? And he goes, no, it's not unconstitutional because they get to choose what church they go to. <laughs> so in other so words, he's a retarded person. Yeah, he just doesn't know there's other religions at my all. My question is, like, how do they enforce the going to church? I mean, do where you have this? to get, like, a pastor Probably to sign the, off a little card or something? I bet you like, where, where signature was thing. Uh, oh, no. It's like AA meetings. Yeah. And then the other oh, question man. I have for this is, like, when you go to the church, do you act actively participate, or can you sit in the back, you know, with your iPad and just surf the internet? Oh, you probably do that, yeah. Plus, like, if he, if he was an atheist, year, fucking go to jail. he would have to go to, like, <laughs> an atheist union or something. Like, I don't understand what... <sighs> so, so bad. I, I just want to say, I brought this up to a coworker of mine who's very Christian, and he goes, well, I don't think it's that bad. How? And I said, I said what, if, what if it was you had to go to a mosque? Yeah. And he goes, well, that's just stupid. Oh, <laughs> it's not. Wow. It's the same fucking thing. Wow. That's, I know you have a dumbass I know there's freedom of religion, but. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just, exactly. I, lo- I, just, I just don't understand. Like, but that, that's just stupid. Because that's not. That's not going to happen. This yeah. is a Christian nation. Yeah, it's, just, it's so. Anyways. Number, number four. Tech buzzwords. Uh-huh. Yeah, so. Um, I think we all know what tops the list. By the way, this uh, this podcast is in HD. So I high definition. I, no, it's not. <laughs> yes, it one ninety two KBS MP three. I uh, <laughs> I had a gripe. The reason that I I brought this up to these now guys is black. that I have a gripe with. It's not just it's not just TV though. They do it a lot in TV. Um, well, not I mean like TV shows, but the thing they do it the most in is the news. The news and I, networks. Yeah. I cannot stand it because they use. 
buzzwords dealing with technology that no one who actually knows anything about technology uses. And and my my big ones like uh, that I name, and I know Ryan has some more. Um, I'll let you tell your big one because I know that you hate it so much. But one that really bothers me is World Wide Web. Have you ever called it the World Wide Web? It's the internet. No Give one's me in ever. In like 1994, when I used Prodigy. I yeah, I know. Never did. I the World Wide Web. But you still hear people on the news say World Wide Web mm -hmm. all the time. I can't stand. No one even calls it the web. They call it the internet because no. that's what it's known as. It's not known as the World Wide Web. Cyberspace, so man. Yeah. Cyberspace is a good one. The whole and then an, another one that bothers me now is that Apple is so ingrained as the technology king, even though they're not, but they're, they're so ingrained now. Yeah. <laughs> they're so ingrained <laughs> now that, that whenever you put a, a, a lowercase i in front of a word, that means that it's it's technological, like yeah. now. Like, so I, it, exactly. it I, I, I report, for. I report. Yeah. I report, that, I Carly, I, I everything. I don't know, I don't know. I have no clue what it stands for, but I it's can't like stand I that. Think it means me. It's my pod, iPod. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to mean. Probably it, that's probably translates into nonsense. Well, uh, iRobot probably maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> iRobot. Well, my I, robot. I, iRobot is i comma <laughs> robot. I, yeah, no, not, I know. But uh, yeah, iConverse. Um, so Audi. And so those are a couple that really bother me. But I'm going to let you. Okay, I swear I they have the news on at my work constantly. And I swear every single time someone talks about technology on it, it's. The fucking cloud. The no cloud. one cloud has. Bad. No one has no fucking clue of what quote the cloud unquote means. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember when someone first said that. I was like, what are they? What what the fuck is the cloud? <laughs> I work in IT. But what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> okay, the cloud in its stupid terms it means a distributed network of computers which yeah. does provides a service or storage or something. Yeah, it's shared. It's cloud. shared yeah, computing. Shared computers. But like Microsoft had this fucking thing with Windows Center. It's like. It was like, oh, this person blinked in my photo to the cloud. It's like she's photoshopping, but how is the cloud fucking going to help that? Yeah. It doesn't, you don't put your photos on the internet <laughs> yeah. because you want to change them with red eye or something. No, they don't want to install the applications on their crappy computer. <sighs> so they put it, I don't They know. just use words because they don't understand them. So put it on the cloud. People, yeah. people understand my, mine is, mine was, the most egregious one to me is HD and then yes. HD glasses. Remember the HD sunglasses? Oh, my God. Like, Why well, look through regular sunglasses when you could look through HD <laughs> sunglasses? Those are like, like Sky I have my fucking eyes. <laughs> my eyes are better than HD. And then it's great because on the, the commercials, they show like regular glasses. It looks all shitty. And they put on the HD glasses like vibrant. Yeah. Like, no how shit. does that work? And then Ben Stein says, wow. 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 HD right. is awesome. So, uh, number three. And this... Most weeks would have been number one. Uh, <laughs> Bank of America is going to charge five dollars a month to use your debit card. Yes. So uh, Benz is actually part of Bank of America. I am a Bank <laughs> of America customer, and I can say one hundred percent. I am not joking. I am closing my Bank yeah. of America well, account. Yeah. Here's the thing that many people don't understand about the whole Bank of America charging stuff. Before we had the financial thing with the Dodd Frank bill, right? Banks would charge the the providers of a service, say like a, a business, to right. use a debit card. Okay, yeah, the during debit the card fee. yeah the debit card fee during the Dodd Bank Frank bill, they cut this in half. Okay, so from, the banks can't get the money that they used to but, get from the consumer. And this is what they're saying on Fox News stuff, but it went from five hundred percent markup to two hundred and fifty percent okay. markup, which well, is still they insane. Half. Okay, so what what they're doing instead is they're charging the consumers when they use the debit card the fee directly instead of going through. The provider of the service. Right, the shit rolls downhill. Yeah, okay. Which <laughs> generally in a perfect world would be fine because they're cutting out the middleman, okay? The problem is that the the services, the people who run the businesses, aren't providing the savings onto the customer. So really, what happened with the Dodd-Frank bill is the consumer got screwed and the businesses get more profit. Yeah, and also the banks are just like, well, I'm still going to get this fucking... They worked around it. That's yeah. all they're doing. Yeah. Um, it just changed where they got the revenue from. Uh, yeah. So, so Benson and I are going to be working on a side project, um, and we'll probably announce it next week. We're involving Bank of America, but I think this is egregious. I think this is bullshit. I should have access to my own money. They're making a profit, a huge profit, How from is this running any, this the transaction. The thing, though, isn't really any different than if you had a paid checking account. I mean, you're paying yeah. money for a service. Well, that's bullshit, too. I mean, well, the thing is, they're making ex extreme amounts of money from commercial banking, even in safe investments. They're getting 3% yields, things like this. But because they got into investment banks, they can't cover their losses. And, and Bank of America is a great example of that because they're fucking super overextended. 
So now they're screwing the customers, which, by the way, we bailed them out. Yeah. Now they're going to screw you guys again. I I don't know. I think the problem I have is is like, I've I've been a Bank of America customer for six years now. I've used their bank. I've constantly, like, you know, I haven't constantly had problems with them, but I've I've never caused any problems for them, and I've never. There's nothing that says that they should just add on pay like stuff that I have to pay them for no reason. Banks can change the fees at any time. Of course they can change them and I can close my account at any time, which I'm going to do. Yeah, Yeah, I'm just saying we don't want a big bank like this to set a precedent. because It's already set a precedent. Wells Fargo does it automatically and Chase is going to do it soon. Yeah, so they're all going to start doing it because... The and then you banks, just move to small local banks or credit unions. They're going to start doing it eventually as well. They won't do it because they want people to join them, and that's right. one of the perks. Well, so, I mean. Maybe. It, it all depends on how, how used to that practice they Lucky get. Lucky Ryan, you have a good bank. Yeah, it sounds it sounds better to you because you don't bank with any of those people because you have a decent you bank. You bank with, what is it, First Credit or something of Arizona? National Bank of Arizona. Yeah, do they do that shit to you? I don't I hope not. I don't think so. I don't what notice anything. They have like a. Well, there you go. Go to his Chase bank. Chase doesn't yet. But they will. Yeah. So that's why I care. I've about considered stuff. Compass just because I don't like ATM fees, but then Compass yeah. doesn't have a lot of locations really. And well, they do have some, but I yeah, don't know. it just depends on how close they are. I don't know. Are. But anyway. So, so this one, I don't know if this is the top five most wanted, but it's just hilarious. Uh, so Hallmark is going to start selling unemployment sympathy cards. <laughs> <laughs> so, so great. Everyone was supposed to make a card. I, I made up one in my head. Yeah, yeah, so I, one I head, had so. one that I, I just I didn't actually read. made one. We'll post pictures. Yeah, it's a great, great card. So you I'll, 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 I'll let Ben, yeah. Okay, okay. so it's got a guy turning out his pockets. I love how it says sample over it because you yeah, got it from yeah, the clip, internet care. clip yeah. art. I know it's hard to lose your job. And in the inside it says, but at least I have someone to play blobs with during the day now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fact, great. It says Hallmark $5. <laughs> <laughs> the one I didn't make, but I was going to, said, uh, sorry you lost your job on the front. And the inside it says, but Leo Apicur made $27 million last year. <laughs> <laughs> right. My, mine is a, uh, mine will be a car, but it's like a box. And it says... Too bad you lost your job. When you open it up, it says, here's some Totino's pizza rolls. <laughs> <laughs> mine was actually like, extremely <laughs> similar to that. I was going to, uh, the, problem, the problem with mine is I, by the time I realized that I was going to create a card, I completely forgot. I had to go to the grocery store to do it, but I was going to uh, create a card that said something like, sorry, you lost your job. But then on the inside said, let me help you out, and it was just, I was going to tape a piece of a ramen noodle package. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what you'll be eating yeah. for the next yeah. Yeah, so. year until you find um, a job. You know, someone should profit off it, I guess. Yeah, you know what? I don't, no, no, that's funny. I, I think that's, it's hilarious. I think they're geniuses. I want to see it's that's incredibly so depressing. It, well, not only that, though, it's great because the those cards existing is... If anyone bought you that card, you'd be like, fuck yeah, you. You're you're, 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 you have a though. job and you're using the money you earn from it. You're wasting it yeah. to buy me you're, a thing. Say, give me $5. I don't see how this right? is any different than, like, say, you know, three years from now, a meteor hits the earth and kills off a third of the population. Would Hallmark make a card that says, sorry, your family members were killed by a meteor? Oh, but, yeah, I think they would. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love sad. I love, I love sad cards. Card? I just love those. <laughs> I love cards that say, sorry, this happened. When it's like, you could just give me the money from the card and I could use that. Or you can just say sorry to my face and not waste your money because this doesn't mean anything. You didn't write it. I yeah, I know. Hey, you wrote this. I did. I wrote this fucking card. Homemade cards mean more. I do. think I want to sell this card. Get, like, the, <laughs> With the clip art and everything. Oh, no, I can do that. <laughs> I, I could get someone to make some right, art. What's, what's number one? Uh, uh, number one is S&P and dummy assets. Um, they're being investigated by the SEC. Um, S and P is the rating firm for mortgage. Yeah, who well, just uh, sh- shit canned America? Double eight us. To be fair, this was done the investigation way before that happened. Yeah, so, it started, but now they're kicking it up. Yeah, probably because we're pissed at S and P for yeah. downgrading us. But uh, here's here's a good. Uh, they're investigating how they rate companies because this mm-hmm. is a stupid practice. It's obviously rigged. And mm-hmm. here's the money paragraph. S&P originally assigned its highest rating to the deal based on dummy or hypothetical assets. They maintained that AAA rating, even though bankers had replaced them with lower quality assets that didn't meet the firm's rating so thresholds. So, in layman terms, say Wells Fargo has a bunch of mortgages they want to put into mm-hmm. a CDO and sell. They don't have the mortgages finalized yet, so they say, well, this is what we think it's going to happen with these mortgages. Yeah. 
SMP says, oh, that looks good, AAA, hands it. And then when the mortgages go shit before they finish the package, then Wells Fargo's like, oh, whatever, just put them in there. And then yep. this AAA CDO is, is like C or something. Yeah, so like instead of it being maybe like 48% AAA, all of a sudden it's really like 32% AAA, and it's like, oh, what? So, one, yeah, <laughs> yeah th this is considered safety, like a safety net, this type of regulation. Um, by the way, the one they're specifically looking at was AAA, rated AAA in September 2008. Mm -hmm. uh, less than a year later, it was double C, which is <laughs> bad, almost complete defaulting. garbage. Almost yeah. Default. yeah, yeah, it's worthless. So, um, yeah, that happens in America. And uh, those guys also double A'd us, so great. Yeah. Glad that they are smart. To be fair, America should have been double A a while ago. Well, so should it. All of Europe. Wow. Well, yes. They're part of the Euro, so. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, that's fucking depressing. I don't know. It is. Yeah. Pretty I'll bad. get you a card that says, sorry about your collateral debt obligation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably making one soon. I, I will say, though, good week for a Wall Street Journal. A lot of great articles, so yeah. good, good, good job, Murdoch. <laughs> good job, Murdoch. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the uh, end of the show. Uh, so once again, if you want to contact us, you can contact us at tipping for, podcast tipping com or call us at 218-666-8407. I'm Michael, and thanks for listening to Tipping 40 Podcast, and uh, we'll uh, see you next week. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs>